You got a question? Yeah. You're recording. What about one of those things like it was hydraulic? Oh, that'd be so cool, like I was on stage at a concert. <clears throat> In case you're wondering, yes, this is a performance tea. It is moisture wicking. Okay, <clears throat> hold your hands up. Um, are, my, are my hands in frame? Okay, everybody put your hands up on top of mine. Ready, we're gonna play a game, you ready? Ooh, what'd I get you? Okay, question number Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. Is it a hard one? Is it an easy one? Here we go, three. Two, go. <clears throat> Ooh. <laughs> what belief are you the most ashamed to have held in the past and what convinced you against it? Okay, so the first thing that comes to mind is all the gay stuff. But then it's not quite as simple as you might think. So then I think, did I ever actually believe people were going to go to hell? I'd be pretty ashamed of that one too. I think I did. The reason I'm hesitating is not because I've always felt really good about everything I believe, but because I didn't necessarily cling to, like, from a pretty early age, let's call it middle school or high school, I had a suspicion that the denominational distinctives, the things that people in my neighborhood faith-wise believe, some of them were kind of wackadoo and wrong. And I've tried, I think I've tried to have what you might call a growth mindset around my theology, but I also don't want to be overly like forgiving. I don't want to erase my bad theology from my memory. So I think, I think I may have believed in hell. I mean, I know I believed in hell. Okay. So I know I did because I was really scared of going there. So I, I'm thinking specifically about like telling other people they were going to go to hell. I didn't like say that a lot, but I definitely believed, um, in a very evangelical, very Pentecostal understanding of like how people went to hell. Like if he has sinned, like if you were saved and then you sinned and didn't get saved again in that window of time, if you died, you'd probably go to hell. I'm pretty ashamed of that. Embarrassed maybe, or it was just wrong. And um, what turned me against it was um, remembering that I had a brain in my head. <laughs> I'm kidding, uh, a little bit. Uh, doing some research, reading some books, uh, thinking about, and also connected to that, you know, I used to believe in what you, what you would call the rapture the premillennial rapture. So this is, this is getting to the area of eschatology. So the end times, I used to think that the world was going to end with, um, um, a really loud trumpet blast, literally the trumpet. I used to play the trumpet. I didn't think it was going to be me, but I thought the trumpet would sound and they're like, Jesus would like walk out of heaven and be like super intense. And then he'd take his people away and things would keep happening. I don't think that's, I think that's, um, not true to be, generous and kind of inane to be less than generous. <clears throat> and I changed my mind of those things by kind of understanding the context of church history, the context of church history, and also the context uh, into which those passages were written, what was happening at the time of the book of Revelation, or what did Jesus mean when he talked about fire and Gehenna and stuff. Uh, but all that said, the gay bits kind of came to mind first. And my, my view on, um, I would say human sexuality gives me credit for being sort of more broad minded when I was younger than I was. Cause, cause when I think about my life as it pertains to, I guess what you might call, ah, oh, what's the right way to say it? Like the, the shorthand in modern culture is like, uh, kind of an, an affirming faith, right? Or more simply, just to say that uh, people across um, the sexuality spectrum can be Christians, right? So can homosexuals be Christians? Uh, yeah, I think that's true. To say that I used to think differently is, is probably true, but I think I'm actually more ashamed than I ever actually thought about it. So I would say this way, I was raised in a Pentecostal home. And so it was assumed, the heteronormative ideal was assumed. Um, man and woman married, man was head of the house, um, king of the castle, lord of the manor, that whole bit. 
And all that was just kind of, I just, yep. I say that way because I didn't like think about it. I didn't defend it theologically. I didn't defend complementarianism or I didn't study deeply the verses in Leviticus that are used to um, denounce or <clears throat> um, make a sin of homosexuality. I just kind of like didn't think about it. And in some ways I feel worse about that than actually like having an opinion I could defend or that I felt strongly about. I, I just didn't think about it. And I'm, I'm sorry for that. I've, I wish I had. Now, all that to say, there's actually uh, a very pivotal moment when I did begin to think about it. And that was 2008, 2009. Uh, it was an episode of the Oprah Winfrey Show. Um, Ellen and her, I think, I think at the time, I think wife, yeah, partner, Portia, uh, were on. And it led to a conversation and questions in our home about two women being together. And that was kind of a really powerful moment for me to realize, oh, because I, I think, I think, I think my daughter asked a question about like, is, how can that be? Or is that okay? Or something like that. And it got me thinking about, you know, I, I was a, I was in a place to like draw lines around who could love whom. Um, and I didn't want to draw the lines in the way that they've been drawn for me. I didn't want to um, establish the rules the way they've been established in my life. And that sparked an uh, sort of like, I guess a journey into actually thinking for myself, which if I may, if I may sort of, um, go off on a tangent for a moment, I think ultimately is the, it's interesting, right? Because I think faith occurs in community and I think we are challenged and made better by the faith and faith expressions of others. But ultimately, in the deep, dark, still of the night, I think we also have to understand why we believe what we believe all on our own. I don't think it's zero sum in either direction. It's both, right? And I think I began to realize that there was a large portion of my faith that I hadn't really questioned at all, and especially not enough, just because it didn't affect my life, which is, I suppose, the height and the horror of privilege, right? And so I'm thankful that those, um, that that, privilege was interrupted in the way that it was. It, it sent me off on a journey of understanding things for myself and understanding scripture for myself and how to think about things in a way that I could defend and I could advocate for on my own and to my family, friends, loved ones, whomever it might be in ways I couldn't have done when I was in ministry because it's, that's a whole nother ball game. So I guess in some ways that's what I'm, I mean, ashamed is a tricky word. I don't, I'm not sure that over the long term, shame does a lot of good. But I recognize that there, as it pertains to, I suppose you might say human sexuality, or maybe even more broadly, the way the church thinks it can tell people whom to love. I was far too late to the game of uh, advocacy or allyship, as it were. And it took, I suppose, a really simple question, which in my mind became a question of, Who's allowed to love whom? Yeah, I think that's it. I, I think that's it. I mean, growing up Pentecostal, I've seen some wacky stuff, but I never had a deep affinity for all the, the wackiest bits. Um, I definitely disagree theologically with the, some of the teaching around what is called the gifts of the Spirit, for example, and, and how those gifts are used, and I have a different view on um, obviously salvation or soteriological issues. Um, and as I mentioned in times, but those aren't things that I feel particularly ashamed of, or I mean, I'm a little embarrassed. But listen, I voted for George W. Bush in 2000. Okay. Right. I did. Sorry. But I mean, we learn. This is how we learn. So, okay. Yeah, that was a good one. <whistles> yeah. Coming in. Yeah. Target right here. My heart. Right through the heart. Bon Jovi be proud. Shot to, is it shot to the heart or through the heart? Shot to the... I have no idea what that lyric is. Shot through the heart. Shot to the heart. Either way, 
Uh, question number eight, shot two and then through my heart.